Welcome to AC Physics Exercises with Dr. Ken here with you and uh, this is number one. So we're looking at AC fundamentals which is kind of an introduction to AC and you can see here a picture of an AC waveform and we're going to be looking at some of the mathematics that we use to model around an AC waveform. As you can see from the waveform itself, I'll just bring up the um, pen option you can see our sine wave here being a typical sine wave and we measure a sine wave from 0 degrees here through 106, 180 through to 360 degrees here and of course some interesting things happen instantaneous peak at 90 degrees gives us our V max instantaneous at 90 and of course 180 degrees later or at 270 degrees we get V max minus so this is V max so that's the positive V max and this is the minus V max down here Therefore, we end up with a volts peak to peak that is here to here. So that's our volts peak to peak. Also, if we know how long it takes to go through one complete cycle in time, it's called the period. That's the period, and if we take the period and invert it, so frequency equals 1 on period, and that of course is measured in hertz. So there's this direct relationship between frequency and period, and basically they are the inversion of each other. We also have an average value running through about here and of course the most important one running through somewhere about here is volts RMS at 0 0.707 so all of that just by way of reminder about some of the basics around a simple AC fundamental waveform so we have to deal with lots and lots of angles. So as part of the first exercise we get you to do is we get you to finish the table and you just grab out your calculator. And for example, in the first one here, we're looking for the sine, the cos and the tan of 12 degrees, the same of 24. And uh, it's just a matter of you working through your calculator. So here's the answers. In the table so if you've already done it you can check your answers against this particular table it's reasonably straightforward it's just about teaching you how to move from angles to signs and signs to angles so just as again as just as a quick reminder if we have the angle and we need to find out say the sign it's simply on the calculator select the sign button put in the angle which in this case was 12 and press the equals key and it should give you 0 0.298 of course the similar for the cos you just press the cos on your calculator cos enter 12 degrees and it should give you 0 0.978 and I won't bother doing the tan and you can work your way backwards and forwards through those to your heart's content but you say to me Ken what happens if they say we gave you the cos but we actually want to find out what the angle is and that's not too difficult either because it's just the inverted angle and the way we get the inverted angle 
we go cos to the minus 1, and it's normally on the same key with the shift button on your calculator. So cos to the minus 1, put the number in 0 0.391 in this particular case, and you'll get the answer of 67 degrees. So one more quick example. Let's say uh, we had put in, we have this tan and we want to find out what the angle is. So we want to find out what this one here is. Again, it's just tan to the minus one, which is the invert of tan. 0 0.675 and calculator will tell you that that is 34 degrees. So that's to give you a few hints on how we go about operating our calculator. So here we have a sine wave has a peak to peak voltage of 680 volts peak to peak determine the instantaneous value at each of the following angles so that's the problem a little bit of a hint um, in this particular case we've uh, given you the peak to peak value but the instantaneous value requires the max which means we actually have to divide the volts peak to peak needs to be divided by two. So we need to determine our V max first. So peak to peak divided by two, our 680 divided by two gives us a V max of 340. And to get the instantaneous value, it's always the sine of the angle multiplied by the Vmax. So there's your hint. So here is the basic answer is our Vmax. We've worked out 340 volts. So our first angle is sine 46 multiplied by 340 giving us an answer of 245 volts. Our second one, nice and simple again, it's just 122 degrees, so it's going to be sine 122 multiplied by 340, giving us 288 volts. And last but not least, we've got uh, the sine of 272 times 340, giving us minus 338 volts. So problem 1.3. A sine wave has a maximum current of 50 amps at a frequency of 50 hertz. Determine the instantaneous value of the current after the following times. Remember the introduction, I um, said you needed to understand the relationship between time and frequency. So little hint and putting in the first one for you. If we take one and we invert it or one divided by 50 means that we have 20 millisecond period. And if we take our 720, sorry, our seven and divide it by 20, I should say 20 milliseconds. That gives us how many multiply it by 360 gives us an angle of 126 degrees. And again, we're looking for instantaneous values. So the sine of the angle, so the sine of 126 multiply by 50 being the maximum current gives us 40.5 amps. So our second one is 10 milliseconds divided by the period. So what proportion is 10 of 20? And straight away you should see that that's half. So what's half of 360? Or 0.5 times 360 is 180. 
So sine of 180 times 50 and at that point you're always going to have zero amps and I'll just do a little drawing here to uh, give you a reminder. So here's our sine wave in current and the problem told us that the V max, sorry the A max, the amps max I should say, was 50 amps here at the max. So at this point here at 90 degrees we're going to get the, the maximum assuming it's a zero, then at 180, as it crosses the zero mark, we're going to get zero amps, and then once we come across here at 270, of course, we're going to get minus 50 amps in here. So, 1 on 10 multiplied by 360 gives us that 180, and we simply take the sine of 180, Multiply it by 50, giving us zero. And our final answer, if we have 17 milliseconds, and it's 17, what proportion is 17 of 20 overall, times 360 is 306 degrees, so the sine of 306 multiplied by 50 is minus 40.5 amps. So question 1.4, for the wave form below, determine the following. We want to know what the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is, what the period is, and what the frequency is. So again, you're going to have to remember some of the characteristics around a sine wave. And first one, first hint is peak-to-peak. So I'll just turn the pen on. And remember our peak value is this one in here. This is the peak to peak. So we have a positive 200 volts making up one half of it. A negative 200 volts making up the other half. So overall we have 400 volts peak to peak. The next is the period, so the period is the time from zero degrees here to the next time it crosses over at zero degrees or 360 is here. So this is the period of our wave. In this particular case you can see the period is 10 milliseconds or 0.01 of a second. So our period, we just read straight off the waveform. It's 10 milliseconds or 0 0.1 seconds. And if you remember, remember the frequency is the inversion of period. So 1 divided by 0 0.01, because remember it's got to be in seconds, and 1 divided by 0 0.01 is 100 so we have a frequency of 100 Hertz so the actual waveform here will go through this particular shape of the wave and it will do that amount 100 times every second every second. So remembering that frequency is the invert of time which is all we've done there is invert the time that we took straight off the graph there. 1.5 this is just about completing the table and using your multiplication factors for RMS, peak to peak and max. And as a little hint I've put in there, V max or RMS equals V max times 0 0.707. Uh, the maximum value is the RMS divided by 0 0.707 and peak to peak is the Vmax times 2. 
And again, it was just a matter of filling out the table, understanding what the multipliers were and their relationships around. So if we were given this one, we're given the Vmax. To get the Vmax, we would have had to take 14 and we would have had to divide it by 0 0.707. Sorry, the 7 got washed away over there. And it will give you 10 amps. So similarly, depending on what's missing in the table, you've just got to use it to find the use these dividers or multipliers to determine the appropriate values in the table. 1.6 for a digital oscilloscope displaying the waveform below, determine the following. We want to know the peak to peak voltage, the peak voltage, the periodic time and the frequency. So before we jump into our hints, let's just go over and do a little bit of a reminder. Remember, peak to peak is this one in here. So this is our peak to peak. Our peak voltage is this one. Most, more often than not, it's always the positive peak that we're talking about. The periodic time is this time in here. And frequency is one on time or the inverse of time. And by the way, time is also the inverse of frequency. So you can see here, I've just simply taken the data I've been given down here. We're told that there's two volts per division. So if you remember on an oscilloscope, the vertical is always voltage and oscilloscope is just a flash voltmeter. So this is minus volts in this direction, this is plus volts in this direction, and if it's two volts per division, then I've got two volts in here, and then I've got another two volts in here, giving me two volts at this point, and four volts at this point, and conversely, minus four volts at this point. They tell us that uh, channel B is not used, so we don't have to worry about it, and they tell us the time base is two milliseconds per division. So again, the horizontal, this direction, on an oscilloscope is always time. So let's just label that time. And two milliseconds of division. So that's two milliseconds. And that's two milliseconds. And that's two milliseconds and no I'm not going to fill in all the two milliseconds is all the way across the bottom I think you get the point so the first answer is volts peak to peak is eight because we've got four positive and four negative giving us a total of eight volts peak to peak the peak voltage whether it be the peak maximum minus or the peak maximum plus it doesn't matter we have only four volts maximum. The periodic time is we were told it was two milliseconds per division and we have one, two, three, four, five and a half either end making a total of six. So we have six divisions multiplied by two milliseconds a division giving us 12 milliseconds. And then finally the inverse of 12 milliseconds or one divided by 12 milliseconds gives us 83.3 hertz. Nice and simple, nice and straightforward. Just a matter of recognizing the data around the oscilloscope readings that we were given. So there's the end. Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the maths around the introduction to AC fundamentals number one.